set up a tent. What's up everybody, my name is Steve and this channel is all about hiking, backpacking, and enjoying the outdoors in Southern California and beyond. If that interests you, consider subscribing. All right everybody, so this is gonna be a little bit different than what I normally do. I'm actually gonna go ahead and walk through this entire setup of this, um, of this uh, Skyscape Trekker tent. Um, it's definitely not the norm. Uh, one of the first things though that you want to do is you want to make sure that your poles are set to 114 centimeters, so 114, 115 centimeters. Um, that will give you the correct height that you're going to be using when you set up the poles for the tent. So 114 centimeters, okay? Uh, we're going to we're go ahead and leave those on one side and uh, grab my stakes here. One other really cool thing that I got going on today is I actually have the um, the poles also, the carbon fiber poles, and I'll show you guys how it's set up with that also. But primarily, most people I would envision are probably going to use this with trekking poles, so we're going to go ahead and do the trekking poles first, okay? Alright, so the first thing that you're going to do when you're setting up this tent is you're going to look for the front of it. Now you're going to know easily that you're at the front because the front has two yellow, uh, two yellow pieces of cord. Okay, so those are the things that you're going to look for first. And the way you're going to set up this tent is you're going to actually set those two pieces first. Now, what I typically do whenever I've set up this this shelter is I've left about you know about a finger finger length worth of a uh, cord um, basically on the taut end so about a finger's worth and what you do is you're gonna set your first one you're gonna fix this up and set the second one And what you're gonna do similar to like you do with the Lunar Solo, if you watch a Lunar Solo video, is you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna follow the lines um, as best you can. Again, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but you're gonna to try to follow the lines if you can. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and go to the back of the tent, and you're gonna kinda of give it just a little tug, and then let it loose. And then just kinda of stake this back part out. It doesn't have to be taut but just, you know, kind of loose. Then what you're gonna do is, we'll move those out of the way for the time being. You're gonna go to one of the doors and open up the door, okay? And you'll be able to set up everything from one side, okay? So you open up the main door, then you're gonna open up the netting. And what you're going to do is you're going to take one of your poles, you're going to go handle in first, okay, into the tent, and then back underneath here, there's a sleeve right over here that you're going to put the tip of your pole into, okay, and then there's a pocket down at the end where that fits into. Now what you do is you just grab the crossbar and you could hold up the tent and then same exact thing with the other pole. Go handle in first, feel around for the sleeve that is uh, intended to hold the tip of the uh, trekking pole and then go ahead and set this into the other pocket. Okay. Now one of the things that I found to be the absolute most important thing about the setup of this tent or this style of tent is the ridge line. If it's kind of cockeyed, if it's not if it's not exactly flowing straight across, you can adjust the uh, the trekking poles to kind of make it so. That's one really nice thing about using the trekking poles. Now, if you're not going to use the trekking poles and you're going to actually use the carbon fiber poles, you can move them in and out and kind of adjust the peak. But one of the things that you want to do before you actually kind of tighten this down um, is you want to just try to get that, you know, relatively straight, okay? Now, it looks like we're pretty straight up there. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull the front two guidelines. Okay, I'm going to tug them both at the same time. Okay. 
All the while, I'm looking to see if the top is actually still straight, okay? It's pretty straight. I'm going to go back here. Seems like everything's pretty taut. Now, I just got to go here and kind of fix, fix this up to make sure these are both at the same height. Last thing that I want to do, if I want to go ahead and really kind of tighten down this initial pitch before I, before I set the doors, is I can always go back. Again, one of the nice things about having the trekking poles, I can always go back and bring up the trekking pole just a little bit to kind of fine tune my pitch, okay? And again, trying to keep, keep this as, uh, as straight as possible. Right on. Once you got that, there's really only one more, or rather two more things to do. You're gonna set the doors. Now the doors are best set when they're closed. So come around to the door that you had closed and you can go ahead and set that guy. And then what I would encourage you to do is close the outer door on this and then go ahead and set this last one. Okay. There you go. Again, just making sure everything is pretty, pretty well taut. Making sure as best you can to make things as even as possible. It's nice and tight there, so we're good there. Just gonna check this side. And there you go. You're pretty much set up over here. Very simple shelter to work with. And what we can do once we've got everything set up, we can go ahead and open everything up. And uh, kind of start getting some ventilation flowing. That's one really nice thing about this tent, man. There's certainly a lot of ventilation in this thing. And the doors are just held open by a toggle and uh, elastic uh, cord. There you go. That's pretty much it, man. Pretty straightforward. Let me walk you around the tent. Uh, so as you can see here, a pretty nice, pretty nice bathtub floor. Um, I'd say, what is that? At least like, I mean, it's got at least like well, that, about four inches maybe so that's pretty decent and um, as you can see got plenty of space on the inside over there let me go ahead and open up this door so you guys can kind of take a look at what that looks like I mean there's certainly not <laughs> space is certainly not lacking in this thing I mean, for you got to consider this is a one-person shelter, definitely one person only. But there is certainly ample space for one person. And over there at the head, um, you can kind of put your knickknacks around your head over there, and uh, pretty much utilize all the space over here for sleeping. Throw your pack down here. What you can do is uh, you can use a uh, sleeping pad and kind of go a little bit sideways and leave your pack down by your feet, right over here. And then the sleeping pad will kind of go sideways into the, kind of that corner. And uh, one of the other things that this thing's got in here, let me grab a seat inside. You got yourself a nice little hang loop. And I got the mother of all flies in here now with me. <laughs> but uh, you got yourself a nice hang loop up over there. And that's what it looks like on the inside. As you can see, we got our trekking poles set up over here. And again, what's really nice about this is that you can just kind of adjust the, uh, the height exactly how you want it on each side. And uh, kind of get it, get it taut perfectly. Let me go ahead and throw this back on the tripod and I'll show you guys some of the other pitch options that they have with this uh, tent. I don't know how it is around you guys, but boy, everything got super duper hot here in California all of a sudden out of nowhere. So my grass like immediately died. <laughs> So, but here's some really nice options that you have here. See, so, and what you can essentially do is you can open up one side 
kind of get things really uh, flowing as far as ventilation is concerned. What's really nice too is if you have vent if you have wind coming from one side, you can essentially close up one of the sides and just have the ventilation on the side where the wind is not flowing. And uh, you know that way you can uh, you know mitigate condensation and any sort of problems that might come from that. But yeah, it's really nice. You can go ahead and block one of the sides. Or what you can do is you can open up all four, you know, parts. So let's go ahead and do that and see what the difference is there. I mean, that's really the, where this shelter really, really shines. Um, for places like Southern California, some of the lower elevation stuff or the desert or like actually up on top of peaks having this much ventilation or ability to protect yourself from wind is actually extremely desirable and very good. Now, the only concern I have, some of the concerns, I mean, I don't wanna jump into any of the negatives necessarily, but there are some concerns that I have with this tent as far as uh, rain is considered. Um, being that the tent, actually, let me walk you around. I'll show you what this thing looks like. Let's make sure we're all still set here, yeah. We're good. Let me walk you around to what I was talking about. So we'll take a good look at the uh, take a good look at the tent itself. Check that out, man. That's pretty cool. That setup is awesome. Just all the ventilation that you want. So if you're in an area where things are, are pretty hot, I mean, you got like an instant uh, net tent. You know, it's going to be hard to beat this setup here, especially for one man one man setup. But uh, here's what I'm talking about as far as like the rain is concerned. You see how everything is kind of uh, diagonal? When you open up the doors, if it's actually raining, you could run into some problems with, um, uh, with rain getting in. And then also if it's, if it's, there's like a, you know, rain where you can't, I mean, I guess, you know, pretty much in any kind of rain, you'll have to stay buttoned up. But if it's a rain where there's not a lot of wind, um, you do run the risk of dealing with more condensation than you would typically do with an average shelter. Now, most people that I know sleep with the doors closed. I've kind of been doing it more and more, but a lot of times when I first started, you know, going backpacking, I spent a lot of time sleeping with uh, the doors open because I wanted to mitigate condensation. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to get ample amounts of ventilation. So. If your sleep system is adequate and it protects you and keeps you warm, really the ability to have this much ventilation is absolutely great. So really condensation could pretty much be a thing of the past in many situations, except for those situations where there's rain or, you know, you're in a situation where, or if you're one of those people who likes to close up everything uh, before you go to sleep, uh, you may run into some condensation with this, with this setup, but I mean, Really, it's not that big a deal ultimately in the, in the grand scheme of things. I mean, everything is starting to become down tech. I mean, even last uh, weekend when I was at Dry Lake, I mean, the inside of my tent, my ultimate was, I mean, it was practically a waterfall and uh, I still stayed dry even though some of the stuff got on me. Um, even though my breath created condensation, I mean, everything's, you know, basically down tech now. So kind of the problems that were uh, potentially problems in the past are, are really not that big of a deal anymore. Um, but it is something that you want to consider if you're uh, looking at the shelter. But there you go. Nice little walk around this thing. And um, yeah, one of the things too that I wanted to speak on was the weight and the material. The weight of the shelter uh, when I weighed it on my scale was uh, 28.1 ounces, which is as far as I'm concerned, it's right on spec. Um, the one uh, thing that I want to talk about was the sil polyester material. That is supposed to be vastly more rain repellent than sil nylon. Um, it won't absorb as much rain, so it'll act more like DCF uh, for the most part. You know, it's not going to act exactly like DCF, but um, it's going to act more like DCF in that it um, won't absorb as much water in heavy downpours. So things, you know, you can essentially shake the shelter off or, or kind of wipe it off and and move on, um, it won't absorb as much as the uh, siliconized nylon will, um, which is, you know, absolutely wonderful. 
Um, but yeah, that's uh, I pretty much think that that's all, you know, what a great shelter. I mean, um, we're going to go ahead and do some, uh, some other stuff with the shelter. I'm going to be setting it up, um, on a really hot day. Probably I'm going to try to see if I can do it this weekend. If I can seam seal this thing this weekend. Um, and then, uh, soon enough, we're going to be having our adventure with this. I'm going to go ahead and take this thing to San Gregorio, um, on the uh, 4th of July. So we're going to go ahead and try this on a, on a two nighter and, uh, yeah, we're going to see how this thing works. But yeah, all in all, awesome product. One other thing, too, I said I was going to show you guys. <laughs> I almost forgot. Was I was going to show you how it looks like with the carbon fiber poles. These are 45-inch carbon fiber poles. And um, I'll go ahead and put this in here and then... Bring the camera around so you guys can take a look. But essentially it's the same thing. You put the tip of the carbon fiber pole into the same sleeve that the uh, trekking pole is in. And I can go ahead and swap those out. And uh, yeah, same difference. Just drop them onto the reinforced pads that they have in here and you're basically ready to rock and roll so we go ahead and bring the camera off the tripod again and show you guys so now instead of the trekking poles all we got is our carbon fiber poles and they work just as well as the trekking poles do but the only difference would be is when you want to work on getting this straight so see like right now it's not exactly totally straight I don't know if you can kind of tell on the camera but essentially what I would do is I would just lift this up and bring it in a little bit until that's straight and then that definitely helps the pitch one other thing that I wanted to talk about and I'm gonna go ahead and bring the pictures in and I kind of uh, I sent an email to to six moon designs and um, one of the the representatives over there you know, I, I'm not going to say it's going to go anywhere at all, but um, they were very gracious. They said, hey, thanks for the idea. Pass it on to our department. Uh, you know, obviously I'm not expecting anything out of it, but one of the things I'm going to go ahead and bring a picture in here and show you. I used to own a Trekker back in the day a few years ago here, and I ended up selling it, but I had my mother-in-law help me out with it where she had created a line lock three on the door in the front. Now the idea behind having the line lock three on that door also was that if I wanted to pitch the front, so let's say in a scenario where I have wind coming around and I wanted to go ahead and pitch the front part of the tent, but leave the back part of the tent open, I'm not able to do that in the current setup. But when I had that line lock three in there, it allowed me to do the front also. And then um, if I was bringing something like the, the carbon fiber poles, I could, um, if I was bringing something like the carbon fiber poles, I could then utilize my trekking poles for setting up the doors in various pitch styles. And you'll see in the pictures that I, that I bring in um, that that was pretty much the case. Um, hopefully one day they do add that functionality. I think it'd be really great to have that functionality. I mean, I, I figure it gives you maximum um, function for minimal amount of weight increase. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just one of those things. I mean, if I could uh, improve anything on, on the shelter, I would say that would be it. It'd be nice to be able to, to actually pitch the doors in the front also, not just the ones in the back, uh, to give you maximum pitch options uh, depending on the scenario that you're in. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you found it helpful or interesting, please go ahead and uh, let me know by giving me a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, yeah, man, go ahead and subscribe. We'd love to have you here week after week as we post up videos. And uh, yeah, we're always doing uh, gear videos, adventure videos, and uh, from time to time, I'll even do a backcountry cooking video. But uh, yeah, thanks again for joining us and uh, we'll see you next time.